Scott Robertson, Razor, All Blacks coach to take over from Ian Foster. After the current World Cup cycle is done, Fozzie's locked in for this year. But from next year, Razor, he's going to be the All Blacks coach. And he gets himself an entire World Cup cycle. We're going to go through the news which was announced this afternoon here in New Zealand. Um, the process and the outcome. And uh, you guys can let us know your thoughts on how things may go. Uh, for our next kind of World Cup cycle with Scott Robertson in charge. So it is an interesting point that he's been given a four-year contract because previously the All Blacks have tended to only, uh, the new coaches have only been given two-year deals. Steve Hansen was only on two-year deal initially until he got renewed. Ian Foster famously was on a two-year deal. Then he got renewed a little bit controversially, but four-year deal uh, for Scott Robertson. Uh, and apparently the board made a unanimous decision uh, to appoint him. But from what they said, I mean, Jay, they didn't mention his name directly, but Jamie Joseph uh, is the guy he was largely competing with, and they said it was a contested decision. It wasn't just a one-horse race, but they went through presentations, and uh, Scott Robertson was unanimously the preferred candidate. They haven't confirmed who his coaching group uh, is going to be just yet in terms of his assistance, but he is, um, he did mention that he's got a preferred group, so uh, they can't mention anything yet because Scott himself has only just signed on the dotted line, so uh, they obviously need to work out contracts and whatnot with who will be his assistants. Now remember, this is the third time that uh, Scott Robertson has thrown his hat into the ring for the All Blacks job. He missed out in 2019, uh, well, after 2019 to Ian Foster, then he missed out last year when Fozzie's neck was on the line after some kind of poor performances. But this time, this time he finally gets there. And I mean, I would have to say he's certainly, in terms of the New Zealand rugby public, he's the preferred candidate. He's our guy close to home, unlike maybe Jamie Joseph, who's off coaching in Japan. Uh, and he gets the results. If you haven't seen it, we did a video on him and his record a wee while back. Basically, long story short is he's won with every team he's coached. MPC level with Canterbury, under 20s level, Crusaders, he's had a flawless record, he just wins. The only question mark that has been over his kind of head is like, he's never coached abroad, he's never kind of coached outside his own backyard, so would that mean some kind of detrimental impact? But I mean, from a purely New Zealand perspective, he's had nothing but success. So if they had overlooked him again, it would have been basically sending the message to all New Zealand coaches that no matter what your record is in New Zealand, it's all worthless until you head abroad. So it's kind of pleasing in that regard to show the other New Zealand coaches that, hey, uh, you know, there's, there's value to be had by sticking loyal to New Zealand and not just kind of heading abroad to take on kind of big money contracts, as we've seen other coaches do. I think it was Chris Boyd that basically said, look, uh, the road has kind of come to a conclusion, so I have to head abroad if I want to continue my coaching career. So, yes, it took him a wee while to get there, but he finally got that job after having, as I said, kind of unparalleled success, albeit only here in New Zealand. Uh, Ian Foster was pretty famously recently uh, not too chuffed with the whole process. He thinks it's, um, I don't know, he didn't ever use the word disrespectful, but that's the feeling you get. And, um, you know, he's obviously just concerned about the distraction. And admittedly, there's a potential for there to be kind of a distraction or mixed messages. Imagine if you're a player and you've got Ian Foster, your current coach, telling you one thing. And you've got Razor, maybe if you're a Crusaders player, uh, telling you something else. It kind of puts you in an awkward position. But uh, they did ask uh, Razor if he's had a conversation with Ian. And they said, yep. And it was a kind of professional conversation, which makes it sound like it was... Um, uh, maybe all business and no pleasure. So, um, yeah, at least that's done. As I said, there may be some, uh, some crossed wires with the fact that you've got your future and current uh, All Blacks coaches already confirmed. But uh, I guess if everyone keeps it professional, I'm sure they can kind of uh, manage that. Now, why did New Zealand rugby kind of break with their routine in terms of not waiting until the end of the World Cup cycle to announce the coach. Well, basically, I think because there was competition for Scott Robertson's job, and um, he did mention that he had a few offers on the table. We already know that Fiji offered him a role for this current World Cup uh, because um, Vern Cotter left that role, but he, Scott Robertson basically said that this was his preferred option. 
But New Zealand rugby seemed to not want to take the risk of waiting around. They wanted to get him locked in to make sure they didn't kind of lose out. So um, there you go. I mean, New Zealand rugby overall has not handled this whole situation very well at all. They they bent over backwards to keep Ian Foster against the seeming like results and against public opinion. And yet, as soon as they've reappointed him, they've kind of gone behind his back to appoint the next coach, which just seems bizarre. So it's not been a great episode from New Zealand rugby. They were a bit on the defensive saying they can't control what's said about them and what's written about them. Well, that's true, but you are kind of creating headlines by your own actions, right? So anyway, what's done is done. We know Scott Robertson's going to be coaching for the next four years after this current World Cup cycle. Um, we know why New Zealand rugby locked him in according to their official story anyway. And um, yeah, I think New Zealand rugby fans will be generally pretty pleased. Do I think he's going to be like a, we can call it savior. Is he going to have like a Rassi Erasmus effect on, on New Zealand rugby in terms of turning the team around? I mean, well, the team rug won the rugby championship, maybe not in the most convincing manner last year. So uh, I wouldn't say he's the answer to all New Zealand rugby's problems. Uh, you know, the other countries are, pretty good at rugby right now so he's gonna have some competition cut out for him but um yeah he, he seems to have the chops for it so i am optimistic about the all blacks future uh for 2024 through till 2027 but anyway you guys let us know your thoughts do you reckon he's going to be uh wildly successful do you think it's going to be a big step up from uh the current crop uh or do you think it's maybe uh, a case of him genuinely not having that international experience and um, the All Blacks is not the place you want to get that first first taste of it. But anyway, you guys, let us know your thoughts and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.